Hi, everybody. Welcome back to yoga. Another, another wonderful Wednesday to be together. And if you're not here in person, I'm glad you're pressing play on that recording and getting your me time in. Your recovery and regeneration and rejuvenation and all of the other RE words that you can think of. <laughs> Today we're going to start in good old cat cow. Yeah, we're just going to take use cat cow to connect with our breath and our body. Cat cow is what I like to call the oil, the, the olive oil of yoga. <laughs> you always need a little olive oil in your recipe. So let's just start lubricating the spine. Inhale, look up, arch, and then exhale, round, look down. So cat cow is just a wonderful, simple way to bring our attention to our breath and to the beautiful plumb line of our spine. Our spine is really like the tree trunk of our body and we can nourish it and give it nutrition by really lubricating it with this breath and with this stretching and also visualizing each vertebrae gently moving and articulating as you direct your spine to move in ways that it probably doesn't always move in. You know, we don't often really allow ourselves to arch and then also to contract and round. Let's, let's go ahead and add a little bend of the arm, so the elbows kind of drop to the mat on the arch, then push up and round through your prayer pose. Inhale, give yourself a little tricep dip as you arch, look up. Exhale, push through and back. Keep doing that a couple of times. Matching the inhale with the arch and a long, deep, luscious exhale as you round and then come into prayer pose. Trying to get those sits bones all the way down to the heels. Scoop the belly button towards the spine. Really contract and rotate and tuck that lower back. Squeeze out all the stale air. Couple more, activating the arms. Those triceps don't get a lot of attention. Last one, pushing through and I'll meet you in prayer. Go ahead and just kind of rock side to side here in prayer. Take a nice deep breath in and side out. <sighs> Beautiful. And then release the hands down by your ankles and come into child's pose. So we're just really resting the chest on top of the thigh. <sighs> Give yourself a little rock, a gentle rock, right and left. Hmm. Good. And bringing those hands back into prayer. Come back up onto all fours. Let's do a nice little C shape, bringing our right ear to our right butt cheek. And then reverse that, doing an inverted C. So we get that twist, that sort of concave twist to the left. I really want you to root the base of the thumb into the mat. Let's inhale as we scoop to the right and then 
Exhale as we scoop to the left. Now we're not releasing the rib cage or the hip. So we're in neutral spine, but we're really trying to just bring ear to hip bone, if you will, on each side. One more time, right? Inhale through the nose and then left, exhale through the nose. Good, go ahead and take that left arm out and through. And let's just send the weight back so the hips kind of drop back towards the heels. You can stay here or you can actually release the right arm up above your head, palm facing down. And you can keep either your cheek on the mat, your left cheek on the mat, or you can bring your forehead to the mat and see how that gives the stretch behind the left shoulder a different feeling. And you can stay here with your forehead on the mat, or you can kind of move between the two, whatever feels good. Breathe here. Oh. With each exhale, we're kind of bringing our focus to our body. Let's try the other side, coming back into neutral spine on all fours. Right arm comes out and comes, leaves under the left arm, kind of resting our right cheek on the mat. Walk the left fingertips forward above your head, palm down. The weight uh, of the pelvis is reaching back toward the, the heels. Rotate onto your forehead. See how that kind of um, magnifies the stretch behind the scapula in that upper back area. If you want to adjust your arm, you can always make micro uh, adjustments in your pose to kind of feel the difference when you send certain attention to certain parts of your body and then when you change that attention, what happens? Oh, breathe, exhale. Hmm. Walking that hand back up, coming back to neutral spine. Let's activate the glutes a little bit. Send that right leg out, holding that um, flexed foot. And then bring the left arm off the floor for bird dog. There's a mosquito in here. That's not good. Activate the belly button towards the spine. Try to stomp the wall behind you with your flexed foot. Feel the reach of the fingertips away from the heel. And then root the base of the palm of the right hand into the mat. Abs are lifted. Your core muscles are the silver platter holding your spine and your back muscles. And release. Try the other side. Left leg extends, foot is flexed. Right arm comes off the mat. Find that energetic line from fingertip to heel. Lift the belly button towards the spine. Activate that leg. Yeah, we're not passively in this pose. We're sending all of the blood, uh, rushing <laughs> into the muscle by activating where we place our limbs in space. And release. If you really do that pose, and activate the muscles, you can, you, it's amazing how hot you get. <laughs> so let's try that again with a little bit of a flow. So we're gonna extend the right leg out and we're gonna inhale here, big, nice inhale through the nose. On the exhale, we're gonna bring the knee to the elbow. Then we're gonna inhale and send it back out. 
Then we're gonna exhale and bring it the knee to the nose. Inhale, send it back out. And then exhale, cross the knee across the body and try to touch the opposite elbow and then send it out. Bring that leg down, try the other side. Now, in this version of the of this, this flow, this mobility flow, we're not shifting the weight forward. So activate that left leg, inhale. On the exhale, without shifting any weight, just try to bring that left knee to the left elbow and then send it back out. Exhale, bring the nose to the knees, the nose to the knees, and send it back out. And then exhale, bring the knee across the body and try and get that knee to the elbow. You probably won't get there. That's fine. Send it back out. And release. Tuck those toes. Take your weight back into your heels. Shake out the wrists. So we're going to do that again, but this time we're going to allow the weight of the pelvis to move forward so we can actually touch the knee to the elbow. I'm hitting this thing, so I'm going to adjust my mat a little bit. I think you can still see me. Yeah. So we're on all, for our, all fours. We're going to extend the right leg. Inhale. On the exhale, we're going to let the hips come forward a little bit as we tap that knee to the elbow. And then we're going to shift the hips back as we extend the leg. Then we're going to allow the hips to come forward slightly and the back to round as we bring the knee to the nose. And then extend. Inhale on that extension. Again, you, on the exhale, you can shift the hips forward and see if you can actually tap that knee to the opposite elbow. You might drag your foot on the mat a little bit. We can actually, we're gonna do this actually again later from plank and you'll see how you don't even, you have lots of space to get that knee where you want it to go. Left side, inhale. Shifting forward, knee to elbow. You can look at it. Inhale, extend. Nose to knee. Exhale. Select a microphone. Inhale, extend. USB microphone. On Somebody's microphone's on. Microphone. Inhale across the body. Then you bite it. And Sorry, exhale across the body and extend. Microphone, microphone. Somebody's microphone is on, so you need to turn that off. Narrator. Shake those wrists out. Everybody needs to be muted. Is everybody muted? <laughs> All right, good. Let's come back onto all fours, tuck the toes, and let's come into down dog. Big breath in down dog. And you know what? Since this is so early in the class, let's do some nice treading of the feet here. Some playing in down dog. Whatever feels good to you right now in down dog. Maybe you want to walk the feet in a little bit, then walk them back out. Maybe you want to do a couple of hip circles on both sides. Shake out the legs a little bit. And then find your down dog. So in our down dog, we're really reaching the heels towards the floor, but they don't need to touch the floor. That's a myth about down dog. The energy is being sent down and that's what's important. Pressing out of the root of the palm, the base of the palm, rotating the shoulders away from each other and down. Don't let the chest fall. You want the rib cage knitted, like you're wearing a little um, corset. Good. 
And we're gonna come into plank on a nice inhale. And then we're gonna lower the knees and do a nice half chaturanga all the way down to the mat. Go ahead and just rest here for a minute on our bellies. You can kind of rock right and left a little bit. Massaging our bellies on the mat, rotating from hip to hip. So we're gonna come into Cobra, but we're gonna come in actually a little bit different this time. Instead of using our hands, we're gonna actually have our hands by our, um, just below our shoulders. We're gonna lift the hands off the mat. From here, we're gonna use the back, the upper back to lift our head, neck and shoulders off the mat. Then we're gonna place our hands on the mat and use a little bit of pressure to come up a little higher and back down. One of the reasons why I like to do this, go ahead and just relax, rock side to side, is sometimes when we're going into Cobra, we just use our hands pushing into the floor. So by breaking the movement down here, I'm reminding my body to really activate the upper back. So let's try that again. Elbows are nice and tight to our rib cage. Forehead is on the floor. We're gonna inhale the hands off the mat. On the exhale, we're gonna lift the chest, neck, and head. The tops of our feet are pressing down on the mat. You can inhale, place the hands on the mat, and then if you want, exhale into a deeper stretch, looking up and coming down. Now we have to be really careful with the lower back here, not to go too far, but holding and, and activating the upper back is really gonna be important. One more time, here we go. Big inhale, hands come on the mat, exhale, using the back. Oh yeah, if you want this time, you can bring the feet off the floor. Hands come to the mat and then press all the way up into a nice cobra and then back down. Ooh, good. While we're here, let's do a bow pose. Grab the outside of your feet. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier to grab them both at the same time, instead of one at a time. We're gonna start here with our forehead on the mat. Now, if you can't grab your feet, I highly recommend just grabbing the base of your sweatpants or whatever pants, like the ankles of your sweatpants. That would work too. We're gonna inhale here. Deep inhale through the nose. On the exhale, we're gonna press the top of the feet into the hands, which lifts the thighs off the mat. And then the upper body just naturally kind of lifts. Let's take a few breaths here. And release. Woo! Walk, rock those hips side to side. And go ahead and take the knees apart. If you want, you can bring your hands up above your forehead. Knees apart and heels together. So kind of like frog legs. We're gonna inhale, lift the legs off the mat. And then exhale, just kind of tap the legs down and then exhale right back up. Inhale, gently release the legs down to the mat, but then right away, exhale them back up off the mat. So your glutes are really activated. Your hip bones are pressing into the mat. If you need to add like a towel underneath your hip bones, that's something that you can do. If you have really bony hip bones like I do, I have two mats, so that helps. We're just keep going with this. 
The emphasis is on the lifting of the legs off the mat. Two more. Hold at the top of that exhale. Now stay up. Keep those thighs off the mat. We're going to click the heels together. Out, in, out, in, out, in, two more. Out, in, out, in, and release. So that's the, uh, there's no place like home addition to that yoga pose where we click our heels like Dorothy and we say there's no place like home. <laughs> Good, all right. Since we're here, we're gonna capitalize on this moment. Take the hands above the head and we're gonna go into a swimmer, uh, sort of swimmer pose. Lift the left leg off the mat and the right arm. That's gonna actually lift your chest off the mat as well. So let's just hold here and breathe. Left leg and right arm. And then bring that down. You can rest for a minute. And then try the other side. Right leg and left arm. And release. And we're gonna get a little faster with these two sides. So let's do right side right arm, left leg, and without coming down, just switch and switch. So let's do an inhale and an exhale with each movement. A little faster. A little faster. And rest. Go ahead and put your hands by your chest. Let's push up into all fours and then let's take a nice wide knees to the edge of the mat and come into prayer. Ooh, and release that lower back. That's gotta feel good. Just stay here for a minute. Let's take the knees together and come up onto our hands enough so that we can reach our hands behind our thighs and interlace the fingers. Send the top of the head to the mat and then pull the lower back towards the ceiling. So you're pulling against the thigh, the hamstrings, trying to get that lower back stretched. And if you want, you can even hold on to the ankles and do that rabbit pose, pulling the lower back towards the ceiling, opening up the, the scapulas and space between the shoulder blades. Rounding that spine, working in opposition to what we just did on our stomachs. Ooh, good. Coming back to all fours, tucking those toes and coming into down dog one more time. Three breaths in down dog. Lifting the right leg off the mat and then swinging it through. Let's do a twisted lunge. Now I wanna talk about a couple of points here. We can do this twisted lunge like it's nothing, but if we activate, like I was talking about earlier, the inner thighs of both legs, you wanna activate them towards each other. You also want to press down on that front heel. 
Do you see how when you do that, that activates the glute? So you can be in the pose and you can be in the pose with a capital B. Let's look up at that hand. How about activating the back of the left knee? Can you lengthen it a little more? Can you get those inner thighs to reach towards each other a little more? And then bring that hand down to the mat and step back into down dog, three breaths in down dog. Lifting the left leg and swinging it through between the hands. We're gonna do that twisted lunge, but we're gonna spend some time and focus, bringing the inner thighs together, planting that left heel and getting that glute activated and then really looking at that finger that's up in the air and do, but to do that twist, we want to press into the root of the hand that's on the mat. Get a little traction there. See if you can get a little deeper. And then hand comes to the mat. Step back. Three breaths. Go ahead and walk the hands back to your forward fold. So make, if you need to bend your knees slightly here, or even not slightly, <laughs> if you need to bend them a lot, do what you need to do. This is your class. Another thing you can always do is take your blocks and stack them and use them where, where that feels doable. For your forward fold. Your forward fold is not always going to be the same day to day, you know, because it's all about hamstring flexibility. If your hamstrings are tight, you may be up here. And that may be because you took a really long hike yesterday or because you were sitting yesterday. You know, you never know how the body is going to react. So listen to what your body is messages are and please respond appropriately if that means that your forward fold is here with your elbows on your knees that is such a beautiful thing that you're attuning to what you need right now wherever you are we're going to slowly roll vertebrae by vertebrae up to standing last thing to come up is the head and you know, let's just stand in mountain for a minute. So heels together, toes slightly apart, palms forward. Belly's lifted gently. Feel the rise and fall of your chest. One of the most beautiful poses in yoga is this mountain pose, the strength and the vulnerability of this pose. We're exposing our chest, our heart center, but we are rooted through the earth and through the top of our head into the heavens. Ah, good, let's do our 20 breaths. And before we do that, I'm just gonna get some water. All right. Wherever you are, seated on your knees, standing. Inhale, looking up, reaching up. Exhale, bringing the hands through heart center 20 times, activating the pranayama, the life force, the breath. Whenever you're ready, begin.
three more. On that third one, interlace the fingers, send the palms to the ceiling, walk the shoulders up the ladder, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Can you go one more? And then extend those hands out as you keep that opening and that expansive feeling in the lungs and in the rib cage. From here, step or jump out to the feet being a little bit wider than hips distance. Let's turn out the left toes and turn in the right heel and we'll come into warrior one with the hips square and forward. Find your warrior one. You want the pinky side of the right foot rooting towards the mat. You want the right hip shining a flashlight forward. And you want the left knee over the left ankle. We're gonna just take a nice flow here. We're gonna take the hands forward and back as we bring the head all the way down between that left knee and by the side of that left knee and then come back up. So we're gonna inhale here and exhale as we bring the torso forward, dropping the chin to the chest and then inhale back up. Now, if you're wobbling a little, make sure that your left foot is slightly outside the right. So you don't wanna be on a tight rope, you wanna be on railroad tracks. So you might have to adjust where your left foot is. Couple more here. So again, we're using the core and we're using the back to get our torso up and down. Last one. Good, coming back to warrior one, bringing the toes forward. Now you can step or jump back. So we're adding just a little bit of a quote unquote power move there. From here, let's just come into a nice chair. So we've got our knees right over our toes. Booty's kind of sticking out behind us. Torso is coming forward on an angle. Focus is about six feet in front of us on the ground. We're gonna take the hands to prayer. We're gonna twist to the right and put that left elbow on the thigh and then pressing the palms together, looking over our right shoulder. If you want, you can open up the arms here as well. Left arm going down, right arm going up. Use that left arm against the outside of the thigh as traction to get a little deeper twist. And when you're ready, just reverse, come center, and come right back up to mountain. Hands coming into prayer, walk or jump, back out. This time, the right toes go out, the left heel goes in, and we bring the hips around, and down to come into warrior two with the right leg forward. Make your micro adjustments as needed. And we'll begin our exhale down and inhale up. Big, long, luscious breaths. If you need to do a couple of breaths for each movement, that's okay. Find your own breath pattern. Let's all do one more together here.
returning to that warrior one, bringing the toes forward, step or jump, feet together, chair pose, Now my knees are over my toes. They're not touching, but they're close to touching. Hands come to the chest in prayer. Twisting, using the elbow on the thigh, pressing the hands together as traction to get that twist. Send the booty back and the shoulders down. If you want, open up the arms. Reverse the hands, come back to center, push those feet into the ground and come back up to mountain. The glutes should be nice and fired up. <laughs> Good, water, 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 water. Another way to moisturize and lubricate. All right, let's do a standing spinal twist. Since we're working the spine today, go ahead and pick up that right knee. See if you can bring it to the chest. And then once it's there, grab it. Maybe do a couple of ankle circles just for fun. Holding that front of the knee with the left hand, slide the right hand along the thigh to the waistline, and then change the gaze and look over the right shoulder. So this is a balancing challenge, as well as a spinal twist. If you want, you can take that arm out behind you. Bringing the hand back to the front of the knee, switch hands and just open up the knee to the side. Maybe take that other arm out. Hug that knee a little closer to the rib cage and then release. So it's basically the spinal twist that we do at the end of class sometimes, but this one of course is much more challenging because we're standing and we're on one leg. So bring that left leg up to the chest, then grab it. That's where you're naturally, your body naturally wants to go. Your knee may deep be down there, that's fine. Hold it lower. Holding the left knee, front of the knee in the right hand, slide the left arm along the thigh to the waistline and then follow it with your gaze. Moving slowly and thoughtfully, you can take the arm out. Bringing that hand back, switch, and then just open up the knee, just to get a little bit of a hip stretch here. You can take that arm out. It's also a balancing, balancing stretch. Of course, pull the knee to the to the armpit and then release. Shake it out. All right, let's come back to mountain. Hands in prayer. Step or jump your feet back out. Left toe out, right heel in, warrior two. This time you want to line up those hips, one right behind the other. Find your warrior two, drop the shoulders. Now in warrior one, we went forward and up. In warrior two, we're gonna go side to side. So we're gonna reach the rib cage forward like we're grabbing something. And then we're gonna get pulled back as if somebody's saying, no, don't grab that. So, Inhale, forward reach. Everything on the bottom stays solid. It's only the torso above the waistline 
that is moving. So, of course, this is activating the, the pack muscles, the core muscles, those obliques are really working, the waistline is working. Of course, the bottom half of the body is working to stabilize. Inhale as you reach forward. Exhale back one more time. Forward and back. Coming back to neutral. Toes forward, I almost fell. <laughs> and a little hop or step back to mountain. Let's just do a tree on this side. Find your tree. Maybe you wanna do the left leg first. I don't know if you ever watched the show or read the book, Dr. Doolittle, but I think there was an animal called a push me, pull you. And whenever I do that, yoga pose, when I do the reaching, I think of calling it the push me, pull you. So let's try to push me, pull you on the other side. Starting in mountain with hands in prayer, step or jump out, right toes out, left heel in, find your warrior two, one hip right behind the other. Breathe. Feels like three breaths is always a good number to settle. And then let's inhale and reach forward. See if you can touch the wall. Exhale, pull back. The push me, pull you. Let <laughs> yoga flow. Thanks to Dr. Doolittle. One more. Good. Back to neutral. Toes forward. Step or jump the feet together. And then come right into tree on the opposite side. Beautiful. Let's get down to the floor with grace. Let's do it at the back of our mat, a very slow roll down. Starting in mountain, roll the chin forward, and then let the shoulders roll forward, palms folding back, upper back, mid back, waist, hips, and this time, let's actually take weight into the hands. So put the hands on the mat as you bend the knees and roll into a tight little ball. So your chest is lying on your thighs. Your head is heavy. We're gonna inhale here. On the exhale, we're gonna shoot the arms out and come into plank. Good. And now into down dog. Now I promised you we would do those knee core exercises from plank or from um, down dog. So let's do that now. Just one set on the right and one set on the left. We're gonna lift the right leg off the mat. We're gonna shift the weight forward as we tap the right knee to the right elbow. You see how much space we have now that we're off the floor? Send it back. Then we're gonna bring the knee forward to the nose. I can almost touch my knee to my nose. Send the leg back in down dog. Across the body now, see if you can, can you actually get the knee to the left elbow? I can't, but I got a lot closer. And then bring that leg down. Let's try the other side. Inhale, left knee, exhale. Left knee to left elbow. Inhale, send it back. Exhale, nose to knee. Now you shift the weight forward. And inhale, send it back. 
Exhale, cross the body. Oh, almost so close. Send it back. Bring the hip, the foot down, the knees down, the booty to the heels for a second. <sighs> Come up onto all fours and getting five push ups on your knees. One, two, or full plank if you want. Four and five. Swing those legs around and come onto your back. All right, the hard work is not over yet. We are gonna do some core here. Now, this is kind of a, call it hollowed, a hollow out boat. So there's not a lot of movement, but it's pretty intense core. So our legs are away from our fingertips. Our hands are above our head. We're gonna take a nice deep breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna lift the legs off the floor and the upper body off the floor to about the bra line. So it's like, and then release. So it's like we're creating a long hollowed out boat, wooden boat. So we're gonna do, let's do 10, nice and slow. Inhale, exhale, squeeze the air out, reach the fingertips away from the toes. The, the legs come off the floor and then we come down. Continue with your own movement and breath pattern. Now, if you get to five and you're done, that's fine. You know your limit and you know where your challenge threshold is. Please listen to your body. Only you know your body. And in fact, your body is really the only thing that is completely and truly yours and yours alone. I think I have one more. And release. Whew. One thing about that that might feel intense is um, tension in your neck. Don't forget to keep your chin to your chest. That protects the neck. If we grip forward with the, neck, the, the chin going up towards the ceiling, that's when the neck can get really strained. You always want to try to keep the chin tucked to the chest. All right, let those knees fall right and left. We're gonna do a little momentum sit up here. Since that was really a small movement with a lot of tension, we're gonna use the momentum. So the arms are gonna be above the head. Feet are flat on the floor. We're gonna inhale. We're gonna let the arms come forward to bring us up about halfway. I'm still leaning back on a diagonal. We're gonna open right and then open left. And recover slowly, slowly, slowly. And inhale, arms above the head. Exhale, coming up halfway. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, roll down. Exhale, back up. The closer your feet are to your butt, the harder it is. So if you're struggling to get up, Move your feet further away from your sits bones. And then if you want an extra challenge, take the feet into table and then do the opening in boat. Okay. 
Last one. Good, hug the knees to the chest. Circle those knees to the right. Ooh. And to the left. Good. All right. We're gonna do a little bit of a challenging thing here. Instead of our usual bridge, we're gonna go into a wild thing. Wild thing is basically like a bridge, but it's on one hand, one arm instead of both. Yeah, or instead of, or instead of our back. So this is, it is a glute um, strengthener. So we're gonna um, extend, well, we're gonna do a modified wild thing. Let's keep both legs bent. Let's come onto our right hand and our left hand is gonna be, left elbow is gonna be right into the rib cage. We're gonna inhale here. On the exhale, we're gonna push the hips up, reach up behind us and come down. Pretty um, heavy on the wrist. If you wanna come down onto the forearm and try it there, that's also an option. Let's just do two more. Inhale, exhale, reach. Inhale, recover. Last one, exhale, and recover. Woo! Switch sides, left hand back, right hand, elbow is into the rib cage. Inhale here, exhale, hips come off the ground, reach the fingertips all the way up and behind the head, bring the pelvis back down to the mat, exhale, push, inhale, recover, and last one, Shh. and recover. Let's just sit up tall for a second, hugging those knees, let the spine kind of come to neutral. <clears throat> Extend the legs. Let's take a nice deep breath in, reaching up. Exhale, lay that torso down over your thighs. If you can, hold on to the outside of your feet, heavy head. Shake that head, no. Shake that head, yes. Let the breath settle. And let's just open up into a little bit of a dancer stretch here. We got our legs open and as a kind of a V and we'll just take a nice flow rainbowing from left side to right side and you can flex the feet or point the feet or you can move between a flex and a point. The thing that's important here though is really rooting both hips into the into the mat. So when you reach to the left, your right hip is pulling down into the mat. And when you reach to the left, I mean to the right, the left hip. So find your flow. It's also a great stretch for the side body, the rib cage. When you come not, uh, neutral, Let's trace the, the arms along the lines of the legs. Inhale, reach forward out of the waist. Forward, 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 forward. And then let the hands fall to the floor in front of you. Release the torso forward. Try to keep the legs rotating out. So you don't want to let the, the toes roll in. 
You want the toes rolled out as you let the torso surrender into the floor between your legs. This is obviously a very intense inner thigh stretch. So go where your body tells you it's okay to go. Slowly roll up and swing those legs around. Let's come onto our backs again. Holding the outside of the feet, coming into that happy baby. Rocking side to side. Now you really do want to see if you can keep that lower back flat on the mat. So if you can't do that, then just grab hold of the ankles. <sighs> To also sometimes bring the soles of the feet together here and holding the ankles gently push the knees away with my elbows it's kind of like butterfly um, when we do it seated but this way we've also get to got this kind of arm strengthener it's not easy on the arms it's a good way of getting some activation in the biceps and since we did a standing spinal twist, let's see what it feels like to do one lying on the floor. Hug the left knee to the chest and then cross it over the body and look over the left shoulder. You can place the right hand on the left knee kind of like we did when we were standing. Now, uh, this obviously isn't exactly the same because we're <clears throat> surrendering a lot of weight into the ground. When we did it standing, we really had to hold our structure in order to balance. Uh, recover very slowly and gently. Bring the other leg in. Cross body, letting the knee fall towards the mat. Now you may not get the knee and the shoulder both to touch the, the floor. I certainly am not. You can use the weight of the left hand to gently pull the right knee down. And recover out of that. Woo. Slow. Extend the body. Inhale. Hold the breath. Tighten everything. Release. Shoot. Remove the tongue from the roof of the mouth. Swallow. Stick out the tongue. Say ha. And surrender do your Shavasana and we will dim the lights and put on a little music to relax and honor the work that we've done today with our corpse pose.
you can stay in Shavasana for as long. <laughs> I just fell off my stool. <laughs> well, good thing the lights were low. <laughs> it just kind of ruined the mood there. Sorry, everybody. Stay in Javasana as long as you want. Otherwise, we'll close our practice today with a good sense of humor and the delight that we get from doing this work together and on our own. The spirit of me salutes the spirit in you as always. Namaste. Thank you so much for coming.